flipping awesome. I need a place to put this thing. Hmm. Huh? I suppose so. Hmm. Put my sweater back on. It'll work. We do not. No talking transportation. <laughs> Oh no, what did you do, Kate? Wow. My favorite, though, because I know it's driving Tim Herbst crazy, and you know how I feel about Tim Herbst, is that the Connecticut Post headline was, Herbst sweats it out in Trumbull. I just love that it wasn't like a clear victory for him, that he actually got, you know, because all, all his other victories were so decisive, like, in town, you know? <laughs> it's true. It's true. I'm sure it wasn't as tough as CrossFit. Uh, 
Um, Sharon, is there any way I could add in another uh, Herbst election photo? Sure. Uh, I'll put it in right now. It's like one of my first, it's my first read actually. Herbst election. Um, there it is. You're a guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what too? And it's just he has one of those faces, mm -hmm. unfortunately. So like he's always, he's obsessed with like trying to lose weight and be in shape. He does crossfit. He talks about how he does CrossFit all the time. He always talks about his diet. It's just he can't help it. It just looks like he's a little. <laughs> you should. <laughs> it's cute. I forget how old he was. He was like eight. It's really cute. Just saw a couple of SPs the other day. Stud Lee. Actually, Stud Lee is not real. A real SP here. <laughs> Camera on my OS hit. Um, this one. That intimidating high shot. <laughs> so, Kate, okay, that was a hell of an ass whooping in Stratford last night, huh? Oh, yeah. To come in, to come in, just talk. People were glad we're not today. <laughs> Lou Decilia. I know.
got something in my eye now. <laughs> well, don't worry. You have some time to get it out. <laughs> a little bit. Oh, watch. So, Sharon, I just need you to point at me when the music uh, okay. goes down because I don't have the headphones. If you can. Or a hand up or anything. I can figure it out. Yeah, look busy, John, because I know we don't have an outside shot, right? So it's just going to be us. All right. <laughs> it's a pretty funny story. It's Wednesday, November 4th, and this is your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski, and if you missed our live election night coverage last night, we'll be recapping some of our top races and also bringing you some non-election headlines this morning, including the latest on the Navin murder case, a statue being stolen, making a miraculous return in Monroe, and a high-speed chase in Milford. John Kovach will join me for sports and weather, and Donald Ang will take a look back on this day in history. But first, recapping some of the major races last night. The voters in Trumbull have spoken, and the town remains under Republican leadership after the closest contested race in town history. First Selectman Tim Herbst defeated Democratic challenger Vicki Tesoro by 357 votes. That was 5,829 to 5,472, winning his fourth term as the town's top official with 51.5% of the vote. It took the Registrar of Voters two additional hours after the polls had closed to proclaim the winner of the race as 700-plus absentee ballots kept Republican and Democratic Party members on the edge of their seats Tuesday night. Although the GOP claimed 15 of the 21 seats on the Trumbull Town Council and five of the seven open Board of Education seats, it wasn't a complete romp for the Trumbull Republican Town Committee. In fact, Town Treasurer John Ponzio lost his race for re-election as Democratic challenger and former state senator Anthony Musto won narrowly 5,607 votes to Ponzio's 5,489 votes. That's a difference of just 118. Town Clerk Suzanne Burmonico won re-election, beating out Democratic challenger Cindy Katsky. In total, 11,302 votes were cast at the polls Tuesday, producing an estimated 45% voter turnout. That's up from 9,159 votes that were recorded in the first Selectman race in 2013. Seven races were decided by less than 100 votes, and more than a dozen races were decided by less than 500 votes. And of course, you can get all the totals at TrumbullTimes.com. Another big race that was making national news, voters on Tuesday decided to either forgive or forget Joe Ganim's federal corruption conviction, offering him another chance to lead the state's biggest city in a landslide victory. The Connecticut Post reports that Ganim's year-long quest to regain the mayor's office used a relentless, sophisticated, grassroots, neighborhood-by-neighborhood -neighborhood strategy, including key support from city clergy and Democratic Town Committee Chairman Mario Testa, who leveraged the city's overwhelming Democratic voter registration to crush independent Democrat Mary Jane Foster and Republican Enrico, Enrique Torres. On the podium, surrounded by family at Testo's restaurant in Bridgeport's North End, Ganim claimed a two-to-one victory over Foster and a distant third place showing for Torres. He promised to build on the 12 years he previously held the mayor's office that culminated in his criminal indictment jury trial and guilty verdict in 2003. Uh, he said to the crowd, according to the Connecticut Post, some will certainly call this a comeback story, but for me, this is a city I feel I never left. He said, tonight we've not only made history, but we've defined a new course for the great city. I never stopped caring about the challenges people face in every neighborhood. I never stopped thinking that maybe one day we could begin the work that we're going to begin today. 
And another big race in Stratford after months of campaigning and bickering, Stratford voters resoundingly rejected the proposed sale of the town's water pollution control authority plant to the Greater New Haven Water Pollution Control Authority. The final tally has 7,823 no votes to just 2,000. 473 yes votes. The decision is a major defeat for Mayor John Harkins, who had for months endorsed uh, the sewer plant sale uh, to New Haven. Stratford would become the fifth municipality to join the quasi-governmental authority, along with New Haven, Hamden, Easton, uh, East Haven, and Woodbridge. The plant would have been sold for $16 million, including $5 million in WPCA reserve funds. The town also would have received annual payments in lieu of taxes of between $200,000 and $420,000. And Stratford would have transferred $37 million in debt remaining from the $61 million upgrades made to the sewer system in 2009. Harkins touted debt relief and lower rate increases as reasons for the sale to proceed. Sale opponents, however, said the sale would only serve as a short-term cash infusion to cover budget gaps. Critics also said the town would give up local control of the plant as Stratford would have two members on the 11-member board of directors. The failed sewer sale is what some say led to Stratford Democrats rising to power as Election Day results gave the party a majority on the town council. Democrats won six of the ten available seats in Tuesday's election, which will likely complicate how Mayor John Harkins operates in his final two years in office. There is a lot more coverage on that at StraffordStar.com. And in another big upset, Weston has a new first selectman. Republican Nina Daniel has defeated incumbent first selectman Gail Weinstein, a Democrat who was seeking a fourth term in office. According to official election results, Daniel, a former school board member, got 1,426 votes. Weinstein got 1,316 votes, a difference of 110 votes. Joining Daniel on the three-member board will be her running mate, incumbent selectman Dennis Tracy. Uh, he beat out Chris Spaulding, a Democrat. Because Weinstein got more votes than Spaulding, she will get the third seat on the board of selectmen. Republicans did well in other contested races in Weston, most notably in the board of finance and board of education races, with an incumbent board of education member losing her seat. And now in some non-election related news, in an update on a story that we've been following closely, as we mentioned yesterday, 27-year-old Kyle Navin was arrested by state police yesterday and charged with killing his parents, Jeffrey and Jeanette Navin. According to a report, he appeared emotionless in Bridgeport Superior Courtroom yesterday and did not enter a plea. He's being held on a $2.5 million bond in a federal detention facility in Rhode Island. He will appear again in state court on November 24th. Bail Commissioner Cheryl Balsamo presented a rundown of Navin's history and said he had 14 years of schooling, no criminal record, and had self-reported his addiction to painkillers and heroin. After the arraignment, Navin's attorney, Eugene Riccio, cautioned people to reserve judgment until after all the facts are known. Navin's girlfriend, 31-year-old Jennifer Valiente of Westport, was arrested recently and charged with conspiracy to commit murder and hindering prosecution. She's being held on a $2 million bond. 56-year-old Jeffrey Navin and 55-year-old Jeanette Navin of Easton were reported missing by family members on August 7th. Jeffrey Navin was the owner of J&J &J Refuse in Westport, and Jeanette Navin was a paraprofessional at Weston Public Schools. The family lived in Weston since 1994. In June, the Navins sold their Weston home and moved to a rental in Easton. The couple's remains were found on the property of a vacant house in Weston last Thursday, October 29th. The arrests came after a lengthy investigation by the state police, FBI, and local law enforcement officials. Well, three Bridgeport firefighters were taken by ambulance from the scene of a house fire in the North End Tuesday night after suffering smoke inhalation and minor burns. The three were treated for minor, non-life-threatening injuries and have since been released, according to Battalion Chief Bill Cook, Jr. The fire heavily damaged the home on Bradley Street, according to the data the Connecticut Post near Kent Street, but both residents were able to escape safely. The blaze was reported around 6.30 at night on Tuesday. Firefighters who went in the home to search for tenants were called outside when flames shot up through the roof and the efforts switched to defensive tactics. 
Hose lines attacked the fire from multiple angles and wet down hot spots. Power to the immediate area was shut off briefly after sparks shot from electrical wiring. Smoke from the fire drifted over the busy intersection of nearby East Main Street. Well, it's time to throw it over to John Kovach now, who's joining us today to bring us a look at today's weather, which is pretty gorgeous so far, John. Okay, we got the blue sunny skies as far as the eye can see, just like the politicians promised going into yesterday. <laughs> just a gorgeous day outside, 65 right now. That's as high as it's going to get. Spring-like, no chance of precipitation, barely any wind, barely any humidity. Tonight, mostly clear, getting down to about 50. Tomorrow, even a little bit warmer, Kate. Clouding over just a little bit, maybe a chance of some sprinkles, but pushing 70 degrees. Currently 65 outside our Shelton studio. All right, thanks so much, John. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, Donald Eng is going to give us a look back on this day in history. John has the latest on high school sports, and I have a lot more news coming up on your coffee break after this. High Cut Rockefeller Estate is Westchester County's top cultural attraction and is now open for the season. Don't miss out. Go online to HudsonValley.org to plan your visit. Take a drive out to beautiful, sleepy, hollow New York and enjoy Kai Cut's stunning architecture, breathtaking gardens, expansive art galleries, and commanding Hudson River views. From world-class art by Picasso and Warhol to expertly tended gardens, there's something for everyone. Kai Cut Rockefeller Estate, a national trust for historic preservation landmarks. When you experience a sports injury, you want to get better and fast. Coastal Ortho Express gives you direct access to orthopedic care quickly. Their physicians are fellowship trained in sports medicine at world-class universities and are also team doctors for area football teams. For specialized personal care of sports injuries, go to Coastal Ortho Express. Open Monday through Saturday in the iPark building, 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk or CoastalOrthoExpress.com. Coastal Orthopedics, keeping you on the move. Darian Sports Shop is a unique store because it's a family store. A busy mom can come in with kids in tow and find everything she needs for them, and even find a dress for herself for Saturday night. And if she's in a rush, she can simply go home and order it from us that night. We'll deliver it the next day. The Darian Sports Shop. We're pretty on the outside and amazing on the inside. Conveniently located with free and easy parking at 1127 Post Road, Darian, Connecticut. Or shop us online at dariansport.com. Football University, the nation's leading football training experience, is now accepting applications for its 2015 camps. Our elite faculty of NFL coaches and top professionals teach position-specific on the field and in the classroom to improve your football IQ and help you reach your full potential as a player. Apply today at footballuniversity.org. Football University, where technique plus talent beats talent alone. The fall bite is heating up. Albies, Bonita, Blackfish, Alligator Blues, and Stripers are following the large schools of bait in the Long Island Sound. This is the time to visit the New England coast, and the dock shop can get you outfitted with the latest fishing gear, jackets, hats, gloves, and fleece. Boater, beach bomb, fishermen simply love the New England coast. This is a unique place to shop. The dock shop, now in two locations, 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, or on the web, dockshop.com. Right. Are you easy to scare? HAN Network's Fast Frights movie contest is here. Can your film make the cut? Submit your three minute scary movie today for a chance to win a DJI Phantom 3 drone. Sponsored by Milford Photo. The only thing to fear is missing the deadline. <laughs> You are watching the HAN Network, and you're not alone. 102,000 viewers have enjoyed the HAN Network in just the last six weeks. Advertise on the network that reaches Fairfield County, Connecticut's most engaged audience. Contact Jessica Murren, Advertising Director, at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. And we're back on this Wednesday edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski. And it's time to throw it over to Donald Ang for a look back on this day in history. Don? Well, thanks, Kate. You know, a group of students 
took down an American president while the world watched. But first we go to 1677. The future Mary II of England marries William, Prince of Orange. That, by the way, is Mary on the right. If you're watching, it can be hard to tell with these mm -hmm. Victorian uh, portraits. They would jointly reign as William and Mary. Their legacy includes passage of the English Bill of Rights, which ensures that a monarch cannot suspend laws passed by Parliament, and the endowment of a certain college in Williamsburg, Virginia. 1960, at the Casichella Chimpanzee Community in Tanzania, Dr. Jane Goodall observes chimpanzees creating tools the first observation in non-human animals. They'd been seen using sticks and other things to, uh, to, get, to get termites and, and, and ants out of the ground, but this was the first time they were ever seen creating them. 1995, Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin assassinated by an Israeli extremist. Rabin had been awarded the Nobel Peace Prize the year before for his support of the Oslo Accords, and his image continues to symbolize the Arab-Israeli peace process. And finally, in 1979, there was the beginning of this. Good evening. The U.S. Embassy in Tehran has been invaded and occupied by Iranian students. The Americans inside have been taken prisoner. مردم آمریکا و جهان با این خبر کوتاه که با گزارش‌های پایان ناپذیر بعدی دنبال شد از ماجرا آگاه شدند. گروهی دانشجوی انقلابی به مجتمع سفارت ایالات متحده در تهران حمله کرده و پس از اشغال سفارتخانه کارکنان امریکایی و ایرانی آن را از زن و مرد به گروگان گرفته بودند. Young Sam Donaldson there introducing the Palestinian news network coverage as the Iran hostage crisis begins. A mob of Iranians, mostly students, overruns the U.S. Embassy in Tehran and takes 90 hostages, 53 of whom are American. The crisis would continue for 444 days, and President Jimmy Carter's inability to resolve it is considered to have been the key uh, point that led to his re-election loss. With your look back in history, I am Donald Ng. All right, thanks so much, John. Well, before we throw it over to John for the latest on high school sports, getting back to a little bit of news today, two Bridgeport men were arrested November 4th for allegedly leading Milford police on a high-speed chase. According to a police report, the incident took place this morning around 3.30 a.m. when Milford police attempted to stop a vehicle that had left a Woodmont Road motel. The vehicle took off at a high rate of speed on I-95 northbound toward New Haven, at which time Milford police stopped chasing the vehicle. A short while later, the New Haven Police Department found the vehicle parked and the occupants a short distance away. An investigation led to the arrest of 43-year-old David Dagley of Bridgeport, who was the driver of the vehicle, and 46-year-old Jacob Dagley, also of Bridgeport, who was a passenger in the car. Crack cocaine was found in the vehicle, as well as a small amount of marijuana. Further investigation showed that Jacob Dagley had had an active warrant for his arrest out of Westport for failing to appear in court on motor vehicle charges. All right, time to throw it over to John Kovach for the latest in high school sports. John? Thanks, Kate. Busy time in the FCAC. Busy time on championships at HAN. Dot network. The FCAC will crown its boys and girls soccer champions tonight. You can catch both ends of the doubleheader live from Testa Field in Norwalk on our pay-per-view site, championships.han.net. Girls final kicks off the evening, number three Ridgefield versus number one St. Joseph. That's a 4.30 p.m. start. Then at 7, Ludlow goes for the repeat as the number four Falcons take on number two Darien at 7 o'clock in the boys final. You heard the and saw the FCAC field hockey semifinals live on the HAN network from Dunning Field in New Canaan on Tuesday. 2014 runner-up ousted last year's champion, New Canaan, 2-1. New Canaan took an early lead, Mariana Ferreira scoring from Ellery Barron. Marissa Baker ties the game for Darien on a penalty stroke before the end of the first half. Then in the second half, Georgia Cassidy with an assist to Hannah McLean gives Darien a, a lead that they would never lose. Darien will face Wilton. Wilton blanked Norwalk 2-0 in the other semifinal. Gwen Hall with an assist to Maddie Duffy scoring in the first half. Delaney Chase adding the insurance goal in the second half. Thursday, number two Wilton, number one Darien, live at 7 o'clock from Brian McMahon High School in Norwalk, and that's at championships.han.com.
Network. The FCAC Volleyball quarterfinals were held Tuesday. Defending champ Darien ousted Staples 3-0, winning 25-9, 25-22, 25-22. Izzy Taylor, 20 kills and 3 aces for the Blue Wave. Anna Barsanti, 37 assists for Darien. Staples got 22 assists from Maya Lawande. Greenwich blanked McMahon 3-0 in its matchup. Ludlow oust Crosstown rival Ward 3-1, rebounding from a 12-25 loss in the first game to win 25-12, 25-2, 25-17. Isabel Andrews, 10 kills and 6 blocks. Olivia Albanese, 10 service points, 37 assists. Ridgefield blanks Trumbull in the last quarterfinal 3-0. 3 0, 25 21, 25 15, 25 16, 27 assists to Allie Livingston, 12 kills, 4 blocks, 9 digs to Elizabeth Middlebrook, 26 assists, and 6 digs for Trumbull's Sydney Adams. Semifinals Thursday, Fairfield Ludlow High, number 3 Ridgefield versus the host Falcons, the second seed, that's a 5 o'clock start followed by number 5 Greenwich versus top-seeded Darien at 7. You can see the final Saturday at 4 from Fairfield Ludlow High School at championships.han.network, or .net, excuse me. Um, swimming and diving started yesterday with the trials at Greenwich. Diving finals are today at 4.30 at West Hill High School in Stamford. Swim finals at Greenwich High School Thursday at 4. It's Championship Wednesday in the Southern Connecticut Conference. Kate, boys soccer, 5th seeded Shelton, 6th seeded West Haven at East Haven High School at 5 p.m. Girls Swimming Championships at the Moore Fieldhouse at Southern Connecticut State University at 6. Girls Soccer Championship Games, 2nd seeded Laurelton Hall, 4th seeded Shelton. That's the nightcap at East Haven High School, 7 p.m. kick there. And in field hockey, 2nd seeded Laurelton Hall versus number 3 Daniel Hand. That's at Hamden High also at 7 p.m. The Constitution State Conference has its soccer semifinals today. Both Bridgeport schools, which left the FCAC this fall for the CSC, represented Bassick traveling to Abbott Tech, Harding taking on Wyndham Tech, both games at 2 o'clock. And Stratford High's Mike Patilio achieved something that had not been done for nearly 30 years over the weekend. He finished in the top 12 of the 173 runners in the Class Double M cross country meet up at Wickham Park in Manchester. He is the first Stratford cross country runner to make all state since Herb Lynn did it in 1986. Benell's Alex Gajar also joins him, finishing eighth. He's also on the Class Double M all state team. Again, we've got Soccer championship doubleheader tonight. Championships.han.net. Dot network. Dot network. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you, John. Dot network. Yes, lots of good stuff coming up. Busy week for us, especially with elections and now this. A lot going on, John. I know you have a lot to do in the newsroom as well today. But we have some more news for you today. Police say a former maintenance director at an assisted living center in Connecticut sexually assaulted two elderly women with dementia while he worked there. This happened in Farmington. 67-year-old David Toganali was charged Monday with second-degree sexual assault and fourth-degree sexual assault. Police say the Burlington man had sexual contact with two female residents at Arden Courts of Farmington. The center cares for people with Alzheimer's disease and related dementias. Police began investigating after administrators contacted authorities on October 21st. Police say Toganali admitted to touching a 77-year-old woman inappropriately, but said he might have inadvertently touched the 92-year-old woman. Police say he told authorities he spent time with the residents to give them some sense of humanity. Toganali no longer works at Arden Courts. He couldn't be reached for comment Tuesday, according to the Associated Press. Well, in Monroe, when a four-foot statue of the Sacred Heart of Jesus disappeared from the front of a religious gift shop last week, the owner, Midge Saglimbene, assumed it had been taken as a Halloween prank. The return, though, is just short of miraculous. The statue has been in front of Angels and Company on Route 25 since a local resident donated it to the store last year. Saglimbene said the previous owner was downsizing her living arrangements and didn't have room for the statue. It's been there until last week when a friend and customer called on Wednesday to report the statue was missing. The disappearance devastated the owners who wondered who would do such a thing. 
However, four days later, the same customer called to announce that they saw that the statue had been returned. Monday morning, when Saglin Bene arrived at the store, she saw her old statue back in its normal location, and not only was it unharmed, it was actually better. Saglin Bene told the Monroe Courier, I looked at it and I thought, this must be a new statue. The paint on the statue had originally been faded from years of sitting outside, and it had had nicks on it and chips. However, the entire statue, from the scarlet cloak and stigmata, to the blue to the sky blue base has been repaired and repainted. That's when they said they must have had a good thief who was trying to help them out. During the four days the statue was missing, the owners had contacted Monroe police and taken to social media to seek the statue's return. The story had also generated attention on state television news, with the owners asking whoever took the statue to return it. And I know uh, when we were speaking to Donald Ang earlier, who wrote the story, he said there was some New York news outlets that were calling the owners yesterday. So it's definitely a story that caught some attention. More on that at MonroeCourier.com. Well, state police troopers in Bethany are currently investigating the larceny of a debit card and cash from a motor vehicle parked in the exit 13 commuter lot adjacent to Route 8. On November 2nd at about 2.45 in the afternoon, troopers from Troop I and Bethany were called to the commuter lot to investigate a larceny from a Connecticut Department of Transportation vehicle. The complainant stated that when he returned to the vehicle, he noticed that his wallet was removed from his lunch cooler. Troopers later found the wallet discarded on the ground in the commuter lot. Missing was a Wells Fargo Visa debit card along with $10. Through the course of the investigation, troopers discovered that the debit card was used at a gas station on Bridgeport Avenue here in Shelton. Troopers were able to obtain surveillance footage of the suspect's vehicle. The suspect was last seen leaving the gas station in an older model, gray or tan Oldsmobile, traveling southbound on Bridgeport Avenue. The upper half of the vehicle's front passenger side door is repainted black, and the vehicle has damage to the front fender. All right, John, going to throw it back to you for another look at today's weather. Not much has changed, and I think we're all happy about that because it is gorgeous. Spring-like day, mid-60s, 65 outside our Shelton studio. Sunny, blue as far as the eye can see. It's staying like that. Barely any wind, barely any humidity. Tonight, mostly clear, down to 50. Little bit of a chance of some sprinkles. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, almost 70 degrees little bit of a chance of some precipitation, but only about 10%. So it's going to continue the nice weather for the next couple of days. All right. Thanks so much, John. Well, we're going to take another break, come back with a little bit more news and talk about what's coming up on the HAN Network later this week. That coming up after this. In Pound Ridge since 1993, the Wine Connection is one of America's best wine shops. Visit our beautiful store for the greatest in wine and knowledgeable service. With wonderful values from around the world to collectibles for your cellar, we are your one-stop source. Visit our online shop at wineconn.com and make sure to sign up for email updates. With great off Pound Ridge, New York. It's time to come back to hometown banking where people are taken into account, not just balances. Where and special events, don't miss all the action at The Wine Connection, including tastings every weekend. The Wine Connection, located at 32 Westchester Avenue, Pound Ridge, New York. It's time to come back to hometown banking, where people are taken into account, not just balances. Where community comes first, a place where there's more than one kind of interest. Where automation will never replace consideration. Where they not only know your name, they know your dog's name too. It's time to expect more. It's time to bank well. Bank smart. Bank local. Bank well. Back to school means back to busy. And Stewart's Market can save you precious time by stocking all of your favorite essentials under one roof. For a healthy start to school, we have all the ingredients. Walter Stewart's, your family-owned fresh local market, 229 Elm Street and at stewartsmarket.com. 
tired of all the bull? Relax and enjoy the experience of buying a car at Pamby Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram. No bull allowed. Healthy, confident smiles begin at Stratford Orthodontics. Conveniently located on Main Street, we are Stratford's hometown orthodontist. We offer the latest in orthodontic technology, including Damon braces and Invisalign. We always accept new patients. Call today to schedule a complimentary consultation. 203-375-8332. Stratford Orthodontics, 2499 Main Street, Stratford. 203-375-8332. And online at StraffordSmile.com. And we're back on this Wednesday edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski. Some interesting news out of Ridgefield where tornadoes don't typically touch down, but if one did, Ridgefield's emergency management system is well drilled to handle it. About 40 town officials and representatives of various departments participated in a statewide disaster response drill on October 21st in which a make-believe tornado struck a building in town and injured several people. The drill was called the Emergency Planning and Preparedness Initiative. According to the town's deputy emergency manager Dick Ahrens, the tornado made a sound like a train wreck. Uh, he helped lead the hours-long drill conducted at the Emergency Management Center in Ridgefield. The state, via computer connection, asked town officials a number of questions, including where will the police uh, where will the homeless go? How will you take care of injured people? What are the local barricades to help? And uh, the answer to a lot of those questions, according to officials from the highway department, is trees and power lines would be a major issue. Ridgefield was not hit by a tornado, but it has been struck by storms, including a blizzard in 2011, Hurricane Sandy in 2012, and a microburst in 2015. That's enough to know that trees always come down and usually take live wires down with them. But there's a lot more on that story at theridgefieldpress.com. In other news, actor Topher Grace, a Darien native, spoke with Susan Schultz of the Darien Times this week about his new movie, Truth, that he stars in with Robert Redford. Truth, which has a nationwide release date of August 30th, is a newsroom drama detailing the 2004 CBS 60-minute report investigating then-President George W. Bush's military service and the subsequent firestorm of criticism that cost anchor Dan Rather and producer uh, Mary Mapes their careers. Uh, but there's a lot more on Susan's interview with Topher Grace. She did a great job. You can read the whole thing at Darien Times. Dot com. But John, as you mentioned earlier, we have a really busy day for the HAN Network. Some championship games coming up tonight. Championship soccer doubleheader on championships.han.network. All the action live from Testa Field at Norwalk High School. Girls, FCAC Championship at 430, number three Ridgefield taking on top seeded St. Joseph. Then at seven, Fairfield Ludlow looks to repeat as FCAC Boys Soccer Championships as the fourth-seeded Falcons take on second-seeded Darien. Schedule for a 7 o'clock kickoff, championships.han.network to order that. That's great. Well, of course, we did talk a bit about elections today, but of course we'll be posting our whole election night coverage at live.han.network. You can also get your local results by checking your HAN Network community newspaper. The links uh, to those are posted at live.han.network. We're going to wrap up this edition of your Coffee Break. John, you and Don are going to be filling in for me tomorrow. I know you'll do a great job because we have some more championship games coming up. But that's going to do it for us. Have a great Wednesday, everyone. <laughs>